I'm just going to take you through information about what we do. We've been around since 2012, um, and uh, things have evolved in the last few years. Um, uh, so I'm going to take you through all of that and uh, give you some examples of what's going on. And just be, yeah, try to be as, uh, Francis just shout for me if I'm taking too long, and, and uh, we'll, we'll, I'll stop and sort of summarize from there. But lovely to be with everybody today. So just a little bit about us. Uh, Catalyze was formed in 2012. Uh, we started by, um, I used to work in the events industry in London, so I came back representing a whole, whole lot of trade shows around the world, uh, which you can see in point two. Uh, so we represent now over 150 events around the world, but uh, as soon as COVID hit, everyone came running to me and said, hey, can you organize us buyers? And we, we tried to jump on the virtual events and quickly worked out that they aren't, aren't great because they had no control of the buyers. So we set up a program where we started making, setting up targeted meeting programs. So these are programs that we actually find buyers based on what the exporters are. So their size, their type of product, uh, the um, uh, experience as well, so you know, uh, certain buyers, certain exporters aren't ready for, for certain buyers, so um, find the right meeting for them, and that's that point one. So we develop all kinds of custom meeting programs, um, so we do them virtually as well as in person. Uh, we also help with inward buying missions and outward selling missions. We work on a couple of e events uh, in South Africa where uh, we host a whole lot of buyers. So, We'd love to get uh, some more African buyers uh, to shows like Africa Health and Africa Com. Uh, as mentioned, we re represent loads of events. We take about 500 SA companies and quite a few other African companies to international shows per year at trade shows around the world, which are coming back in force uh, at the moment. And then we actually run some of our own events in South Africa because we've seen uh, the need to actually bring international buyers into the market and show them that there is infrastructure here and you know, it's very well run. Uh, we are um, all 54 different countries. We have Africa is not one country. Um, and we all uh, have a yeah, huge amount of um, amazing products to, to showcase. So we do, uh, do that in two events, Africa Games Week, which is based on game development. Uh, so so African-made made games that give them access to the world. And ocean innovation, looking at the ocean economy and looking at uh, technology and innovation and products coming out of the uh, ocean economy space and giving them investment and, and buyers around the world. So, I'm going to speak to you today about different ways of getting in contact and how we do things, so maybe it can resonate with you guys and, and give you some ideas. So, uh, key with communicating with buyers, uh, it's simple, you see that talk to the buyers, uh, they don't want emails, uh, they don't want long information sent to them, they do not read things. Uh, what we found with buyers in the last two, three years is that the shorter you can say uh, information to send information to them about a company, the more likely they're going to, to do stuff. So a lot of our meeting programs with Engage Trade Africa that we're doing with US uh, Trade Hub, uh, USA Trade Hub, uh, we have simplified uh, information about a company into five words. So that buyers are able to have a look at them and go, okay, yes, it's a product that we want, and we keep it very simple as well. We make sure that it uh, says something Interesting, 90% uh, of the product of you know, cashew nuts sent to the US or something like that, you know, something very short and, and sweet. So they go, oh, that's what we want to do. We want to we want to also buy from that company. So that's, that's key. So, uh, but, but within this whole process in the last two years, we found out that we actually, the more we talk to the buyers, the better and more success we have. So we've really been breaking it down into rather seeing what the buyers want and then going and sourcing the product. So we are speaking to them consistently. Uh, a big part of the opportunities and deals that are coming through for Engage Trade Africa are actually the buyers that we spoke to before we got any exporters on board. Um, so, so things like um, banana flour, um, we had a buyer asking us for that and we went out and found them and there's a big opportunity to market and source products. Obviously it's difficult to source the right companies but it, it's, it's much easier than 
finding companies and going, okay, I've got the companies and exporters now, let's go find the buyers because then you're going to have to sell to those buyers, sell these companies that might not be right for them that they don't want um, uh, pushed on them. So that's been very key for us. Um, the other key thing here we found is pain points, the, the buyer's pain points. So, uh, you know, they constantly talk to us, they love to buy from Africa, but freight is a nightmare, or customs is a nightmare, storage is a nightmare. So, knowing that kind of stuff before you speak to the exporters and sellers is key. So that when you speak to an exporter, have you got your, have you got someone that can send samples down uh, quickly? Number one, if they don't, then you know you're going to mess our buyers around. So please don't. Do you, have you got all the certificates? Have you exported to to uh, a market before? Have you got the customs documents that you need? Are you sure it's going to get through custom and customs? Because as soon as you mess a buyer around, you've lost them, and that first order is always key. And then storage. Have you got somewhere in South Africa to? Um, put the product because the buyer definitely doesn't want to use a part of their storage space to, to store something or go and find someone else that has to store it. So where do you store that? Have you got a distributor in the market? Are you, are you organized or got some kind of connection in the market? So that's, that's also very key. But there's many others uh, that the buyers will come across. So please talk to the buyers, ask them this. Others, obviously, minimum order quantities, uh, certain buyers, if you're talking to a distributor, they want to uh, order a certain amount so it makes it cheap enough to bring them the product into the company, into the country. And then uh, again, even for your retail buyers, you know, uh, some of them again want to maybe only do a starting, small starting order. And if you can say, I've only got a ton that I can send you, then the buyer's going to go, well, I, I don't actually want a ton yet. Uh, I just want uh, 100 kilograms to test the market first. Uh, so please, can you, can you send that? And if you're quite rigid on that kind of stuff, you're never going to get that traction with the buyer. You're never going to build uh, confidence in them. So you really need to be quite flexible on this. But but uh, for us, it's quite clear to know that the buyer, uh, if a buyer is going to order 100 kilograms or or uh, a container, uh, we we need to know that kind of information from them. So we we do speak to them a lot. And then they all need certain certifications. So just know that if they know their product, and most buyers know most of the stuff that they, they're buying from, they'll tell you, okay, I need a certain asset or I need a certain registrations for a type of product before I can actually put it onto my shelves or actually deal in it if it's, if it's not. So that's key. Um, and uh, another point that I haven't put there as well, that buyers are all very different. So what we've come across is that, and that's part of talking to them. Um, buyers can be manufacturers, they can be distributors, they can be retailers, they can be online stores. Uh, there's so many different ones uh, that you deal with in a market. You have to be quite flexible when selling your product and be quite clear about that. Uh, about what you're doing as well and, and, and what the buyer is about. And then be cheeky. Um, yeah, we've been quite cheeky in the last uh, two years. Why do you not want to buy from Africa? Um, is there some reason? Are you scared? What's, uh, what, what's the problem behind it? So we, we, we've been asking this question a lot and surprisingly most people say, yes, we'd love, we'd love to buy from Africa. We, we're from Africa. We want to buy from there. Um, but they will give you a, 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 a reason. Uh, yes, we've, we've been burnt in the past or the company hasn't seen things through. So part of our role in Engage Trade Africa is trying to give people confidence uh, in, in, in buying the product uh, from Africa and maybe a, an extra step. So the fact that USAID are involved or Catalyze are involved, that they can be like a cushion or someone that they can go and speak to if there's something goes wrong with their, with their uh, products into the country. So that's very key for us. Uh, what we've seen change in the last few years is uh, what buyers really require companies to have. So you'll see a digital footprint is now extremely important. Um, and this can be as simple as just getting your LinkedIn page right, and that is where I would start with everybody. Um, they are obviously everyone's used to using Facebook and you jump on Instagram and Pinterest and stuff like that. But at the core, um, if you're dealing with buyers, you have to have a credible LinkedIn profile, something that looks good. Uh, we give people advice on it all the time. I remember uh, I bought a Swan and Company um, sell. Great, but how, and I saw it happen again yesterday. How do we? How do I get in touch with you? Because I didn't actually have a personal profile. So uh, he replied and he 
sorted that out and then started getting inquiries through there. But it's very important that you get something like LinkedIn uh, down. A lot of the international buyers uh, are going on to that, verifying that you are a real person, that you have a real product, that you're part of the company. So I would start there. Uh, but still very important. Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, buyers want to see this as well because they want to know that you are marketing the product as well as them and that you've got some kind of a following and, and information online. So, so those are all very, very important as well. Um, get a little videos done. So we got a whole of the videos done for the last engaged trade in Africa and it was awesome. I mean, so easy to send a buyer a video. Buyers do not want to work through 10 pages of uh, PowerPoints or PDFs. They really, as I said, we've broken it down into five words. If you can do it in five words, that's great. That's great. But if you can do it in a little 30 second video, even even better. Um, but uh, you really need to make sure that it's it's easy for them. And then also buyers want to see that you put a bit of effort into uh, making a little video. So having a video they'll be able to use that video to, to market to their bosses or to, to their market and their, their clients. So so please uh, send things through. Um, and then your know, content is, is key as well. So you want to make sure that you've got content and talking about it or someone's cooking with your product or someone's using, like, using your product or, you know, they, they, they want to see that kind of information online so they can use it. It makes it easier for them. Uh, again, as I said, reach the market, uh, freight is key, you know, your customs, uh, if you've got a local distributor, even better, um, try to find that. I know it's difficult to find. Uh, there are solution, they are solutions, there are um, uh, fulfillment companies. Uh, we just had a big call with Parcel Ninja in South Africa. They are very keen to work with people, so there's someone like that you can work with. Uh, and there's, but there's many others as well, so so very key to to know how to get your market your product into market. And the the key with local distribution with and a lot of people have come to us and said, can we work with a retailer? And I said, well, you know, retailers expect you to have someone that they can send the product back to. So if you do not have a local distributor, forget about working with a retailer at this stage. They are not going to want to send something back into Africa. It's too costly for them. Um, they, it needs to be simple for them. And then, as I mentioned, certification is key. So get your certification correct. Make sure it is, it is recognised. Um, big problem that we've had in this is people said, "Oh, we, you know, we've um, uh, registered by the local um, uh, uh, organic association." That means nothing to an uh, international buyer. They want to be, be a recognized by a, a, a company that's recognized all over the world. So they will not take a, a certificate, certificate, certificate from uh, a, a country-based uh, and only single country-based um, certification body. It needs to be internationally accredited. Uh, and make sure things are readily available. Make sure your certifications are ready, readily, readily available. Your company documents are available, um, and get this through to people very quickly. Uh, that's what people want to see, and that's been a big blockage in our process as well. People not responding, sending information very quickly. Buyers have a very short attention span. Uh, they've pretty much got a few minutes. Uh, if you don't uh, get back to them in those few minutes, they forget and they've got 5,000 other products that they're, that they're working with. So it has to be very quick. It has to be uh, con uh, continuous as well. Opportunities at the moment, uh, we've gone into a lot of food products, there's a lot of that. Within food products, it seems to be ingredients and raw materials still. Finished products are still quite difficult to get into to new markets, but there's a huge demand for ingredients and materials. Very difficult to get certain things from other parts of the world at the moment. South Africa is the main example. We get loads of our herbs and spices from all over Vietnam and Southeast Asia. Getting freight is a nightmare. The price of containers has increased by threefold. Uh, so there's a huge opportunity in that space at the moment. So um, and then with the change in world markets as well, and, uh, issues in, in Russia, Ukraine, there's a huge amount of stuff that can't come out of there anymore. So there is opportunity in that space, meat and, and various other things. Uh, cosmetic oils. Uh, we think we we tried cosmetics last year. We realised cosmetics are very difficult to get into a country, but cosmetic ingredients are cosmetic companies and around the world that are looking for something different. They have African herbs and flora, amazing. 
very different people around the world and in South Africa want to put these in. So there's been some great uh, different uh, herbs that have come out on our projects lately. And then you'll see African culture as well. So doing something that's done in Africa that's not done in any, any part of the world, you know, um, is is quite interesting. The internationals are really enjoying that, and it's got a great story behind it. It's marketed very well, so it's that kind of stuff. And then lots of other products. So quality products manufactured in, in Africa. We're dealing with the bulb world at the moment. They manufacture light bulbs in Botswana. An amazing story, and they, we've got some amazing opportunities for them. Uh, a year ago, you couldn't get any light bulbs. Um, because there was no freight coming out of China. It's changed again, but that opportunity has definitely uh, opened up and getting products from Africa is very exciting and, and interesting on, on buyers. Uh, just be aware, size of product is key with exports. Uh, the smaller your product, the much easier and uh, more attractive the product is. Bulky products always have to be kind of local, so you know, when you have to think of the idea of sending air to people, water to people. Uh, a lot of there's a lot of companies making beer at the moment in South Africa and, and in other parts. But when you try exporting that, you realise that you're actually just exporting water. So rather export the ingredients and get someone to bottle for you in the market. So just think of that uh, quite carefully when when you're sending stuff um, to different markets. And then just to sort of round up what we do again uh, and how we'd like Namibia to get more involved, we are doing targeted meeting programs. Uh, I've got two minutes left, I am going to finish quickly, uh, where we set up those meetings for you. Uh, we're doing these for various people at the moment. It's part of what we're doing with Engage Trade Africa. It's specific to buy a facilitated meetings, notated meetings, you get meeting reports, very different to a trade show because it's direct to market, but you're probably meeting five up to 10 buyers um, we do all the different international trade events and we lead delegations uh, all year, year round and that's been our bread and butter since 2012. We're still able to help with that. We do major trade shows around the world um, and all kinds from South America through the America through to, to the Russia's, Asia's, Middle East, uh, even Australia we do stuff. So we can help you with that. Uh, and then we also help with most of our delegations as mentioned, we're bringing in for Africa Health. Uh, we've just done one for Decorate, we're doing stuff for um, uh, Africa Com as well, so bringing key buyers from Africa into to these trade shows, and we're able to handle them into other markets as well, so we're looking at that as well. And that's all from me. Any questions?